Yes. Hare Krishna. So, I'm sorry for the few minutes of delay. This is material world. Unless we provide some gaps, spirituality cannot seep in. So maybe this is the much needed gap. Welcome to the um, lecture for the Saturday morning program today here at ISV. Um, we'll be starting with the Pranam prayers from BG introduction. We start with Prabhupada mantra and then the prayers. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutali Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swamiti Namini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nirvishe Shashu Nevadi Paschati Desa Tarini Om Agyan Tibirandasya Gyananyan Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bestam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Nadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Utapad Kamlam Shri Guru Navaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadavetam Savadutam Parinas Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha he Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kant Radha Kant Namastute Tapte Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrashabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Pri Vancha Kalpa Tarubascha Kapasa Dubya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adveta Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So today, we will be talking about top-down consciousness. This is a sequel of um, um, episodes, not lectures really, in which there's a dialogue. So let me start with that. So, just the word top-down means something initiated at the highest level, right? 
and what is being um, stressed in this whole thing is that consciousness is not something the evolution of which comes from just our own efforts it is something that has to be driven by mercy especially if you go all the way there is a part in this material world where from the unicellular animals all the way up to the human being there is a gradual evolution kind of similar to charles darwin's theory but with the consciousness and the subtle aspect also it built in but along with that the material consciousness um, evolving there is also a spiritual aspect of things and how we connect to the supreme that itself is coming as a mercy and that is the part of consciousness that we at isv it is going to talk about and that is a top driven effort so unless that comes down top down on our own we cannot get do much about it so um, this lecture series this episode has been a discussion between two birds as mentioned in our vedas um that there are in our heart in this body the kshetra there are two birds which are sitting and what are the characteristics of these birds let's talk so one is the one that you see on the left hand side is eating the fruits of its labor karma and therefore i have given it the name karmi and the other one is a expansion is an incarnation of an expansion of krishna it's quite levels deep and i'm calling it premi because by nature god is premi that he loves so um in this material world our journey of the conditioned soul while karmi is the one that goes around in eating the fruits of labor and goes on the cycle of birth and death premi continues with it in the mundakana upanishad that's where this has been given in also swetaswar upanishad so in 3.1.1 and 2 says that these two birds are inseparable companions perch on a branch of the same tree so it's essentially is just telling that it is in the heart one of them tastes the sweet and bitter fruits of the tree why sweet and bitter because that is the way the conditioned life is something things are happy something things are not that good other tasting neither calmly looks on so there is no other business for the premi bird than just to watch this material consciousness evolving karmi and seeing when does it turn to supreme and when it tries to do that that's where this top down consciousness aspect comes into picture because that comes as part of the blessing and mercy so today in this dialogue we'll talk about what has happened in the past and then we'll go on so in the past in the episode the first one about 2 years back when um at some point of time karmi turned towards premi so the premi they looked with each other and then premi said started with this basic word premi vacha geeta se surrender so when karmi heard that of course he noticed this bird but then it was a little shocking for him and he said never i'm not going to do that let me decide i have learned to live in this world on my own and he says my two senses let me see how this fits in into my life so he tried a bottoms up approach and the consciousness as a dictionary meaning is the state of being awake awareness by mind of itself in the world and karmi thinks i know this world very well so no problems so then he tries many things some trying to hurry up things like so that we can go on to this episode so he tried to explain consciousness to psychology and every time he would give some explanation from this mundane world premi would cut that argument by saying that's not good enough this is not it's not meeting the mark for example if you look at the the sign curve over there it's just saying the definition of consciousness itself has changed many many times since the term was coming into use in the 19th century so it is not something very reliable just by the dictionary meaning then psychophysics hypnosis sociology by sociology free will and illusion so that's what karma premi tells karmi free will is an illusion where is the free will you dictated by the way things are around you the government tells you to do things when i was a kid i remember my dad used to take me out to the city center there and we used to have a coke at that point of time as part of birthday celebration because that was the in thing now no one cares about it. it's like water right in fact they forgotten water and just having this acid thing and they call it part of life so we are influenced by the world around us and that's what we take for granted 
but there is no real free will because we are dictated by other people's greed and things like that anyway long story short he tried many other concepts to explain consciousness neuroscience gangs field effect and every time he would cut, cut the argument for example in the bottom part you see they put uh, ping pong balls cut them into half and put in the eye socket and then people get different visions and this is called gangs field effect it came i think from germany and then Premi told Karmi, "All you are doing is really playing ping pong in your dreams. So it's not something that will get you any much farther." He explained, saying, "Oh, I can get consciousness through yoga, hatha, dhyana, kundalini." And as you can see, as Prabhupada ji very clearly tells, that all the all the yogis are really doing gymnastics. So unless you get the supreme into it, it really is a waste of time, or not a waste of time, but it's not really getting you to the point. so as you can see in this gyana yoga right gyana yogis do a lot of mental thinking it's called astral plane so there's a joke over here are you thinking what i am not thinking so <laughs> and then enough so premi tells karmi your way of doing this all of these yogic thing is myopic your third eye needs a contact lens which means the way you're doing all of these kundalini and other things that won't get you very far he says i give up So that's when Premi snaps and says, "Surrender! Did you say surrender?" And that's when he starts telling him the reality in life, right? So this is the first conversation, and he says, "This is a top-down approach." And he says, "Firstly, the problem with you is trying to take a torch and try to search for the source of black light. If you want to search a black hole, you can't shine a light on it, right? That that won't work. So that was the problem. You are taking a bottoms-up approach, and that's when he clarifies many many things, like what's the difference between brain and mind." what is the duality about mindful or mindful with an extra l is your mind full of the various things which is on the left hand side or is it really clear because that's what mind being mindful is he talks about god spirit oneness what is the qualitative oneness between the spirits souls the conditioned soul and god what is the difference between them as you can see on the right hand side it says the jiva is 110000 the tip of the hair so really really small and tiny just because it has qualitative oneness It's not good enough. So essentially, we are living in a material prison, and we are eternally stuck here, unless you get top-down mercy. And for that, you have to detach yourself from this world. And then there are really two worlds. There is a material world, which is a reflection of the spiritual world. There is a vakunta, a place where there is no anxiety. And at that point of time, after many many shlokas and a lot of explanation from Bhagavad Gita. the karmi surrenders and say i give up i have an unconditional surrender so that's what we thought at the episode 1 and then the episode 2 started about a year back and karmi thought okay i got to have krishna in my life so he perfectly adjusted krishna in his life fine i love krishna if that is what is needed and it looks like he made a mockery of things because he tried to retrofit things bottoms up so he said okay have to do four regulative principles as you can see over here he did some of the things according to his own mind he said no gambling so he hired someone to gamble for him right and he says no intoxication so he stopped drinking alcohol he started eating alcoholic stuff and no meat eating so he started drinking meaty stuff and then he said no illicit relationships is fine i'll marry all my girlfriends so obviously that didn't work out and as for a sadhana he said 16 maha rounds so he had a bead which is made of 108 um beads at one shot so when he would count one hari krishna mantra he thought i am going to do fast so he was done in all 16 rounds in 10 minutes and then did drive through prasadam so he was doing everything but he retrofitted things in his life so um sast patnam he was checking his cell phone while reading the shastra he was watching um soccer while um listening to maha mantra so anyway coming to all to his ways of adjusting to krishna consciousness premi came back saying premi vacha you re enter orbit of this sansar chakra it's not going to get you much far but you better off than being a true karmi you're trying to introduce krishna in your life but you're not going to get out of this cycle of birth and death and the crux is you're taking a bottom up approach you're trying to retrofit krishna consciousness so your primary life is still your karmi life and you are retrofitting devotion in your life and the crux is you have to go top down you have to th- see things from the top you have got content without intent your intention is not there hari krishna mata ji so 
and then he, basically that's when premi tells karmi it's not about you it's not that you have to fit things in your life it's about him and who is him krishna so you have to look top down this is krishna's world and that is krishna's world too the spiritual world and we are just tiny little particles so that's how when you start seeing things like that that's when you things will work out so your current state is you put yourself in the center and krishna is all around you and what should happen is krishna should be in the center you should be all around him so that's the essential take difference and then many 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 shlokas later in episode 2 karmi says okay i understand i was doing unconditional surrender but it was not complete so i give up complete unconditional surrender so at that point of time episode 2 entered ended last time we met about 2 months back that's when the third thing so time passed by once again you can see this clock is running and at that point of time they had a third dialogue between karmi and premi so karmi said well you trashed my bottoms up approach so i am now started thinking reflecting and i am pondering on vices right so what are the various vices lobh mo mad matsar right so and he said also where does everything come from so then obviously uh, he says premi says they are all sarv karana karanam it comes from krishna so that's when karmi who is now a very intelligent person snaps and say i have a synthesis question i merge the question a and b vices and sarv karana karanam and i want to find out does krishna exhibit vices so that was our episode 3 and that's when we went into a, a dialogue so premi re- responds to karmi saying yes he does represent exhibit vices but a little different so what's different they are nectarian as perform of many wonderful vicious pastimes as nimai so that's when we went into chatar bhagavat reading of the adi khanda last time and we saw nimai when he was young he was very restless and he entered into many many past times which kind of represented the so called vices in this world but actually they were very sweet so and then f- and these transcendental activities can be represented by with, we ended with this saying jan karam cha me divyam evam soyaveti tatvata so one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities then he will never be born again so that's when after many many lectures sorry many many shlokas and verses karmi and premi had this conclusion and karmi says to premi okay it's not just complete unconditional surrender i do a vaishnava surrender which means i start putting krishna into the end of my life and that's when we are here now so with that flashback we now go on to today so time has passed by since the third time they talked to each other and this time for a change instead of premi asking karmi how's life going or what is going on are you doing a sadhana now you can see this gradual um, evolution of karmi has happened right because he's attached krishna somehow the other is fitted him so now he's saying do you have a minute to premi and i have been pondering and thinking and karmi karmi says the mood is operandi of shri hari right so he's thinking about the way lord works and he said i have read this verse from 10888 and that's what i have a question about hari's nature if i especially favor someone i gradually deprive him of his wealth that's what lord is telling then the relatives and friends of such a poverty stricken man abandon him in this way he suffers one distress after another wow that's shocking to someone who is not into krishna conscious and he is really scared so that's his um, karmi prashnena will tot lot take away everything and make me poor really scary right i mean we be coming from the background of iskon may not realize this but i do know that once i was talking to a bengali friend of mine and i was telling them why don't you guys pray to krishna that much because in bengal they pray a lot to kali and krishna right and the kind of two camps over there so the my friend told me that actually um as part of the society at least maybe in that region they allow widows to actually go and pray to krishna and what's the reason because widows don't have anything at stake in this material world they don't have anything to lose so this is the kind of notion people who are really cognizant about krishna who are about some of krishna are actually afraid going into his world they'll think he'll take away everything right he's hari hari means one who takes away everything so that's where his fear is coming from so that's when premi informs him it's a blessing fear not the lord gives and the lord takes away too 
so at that point of time we go into this reading of a favorable curse so that's why he gives an example of a katha where a curse has been good so we let's go into that so we'll go into a katha where an example of where lord acts or one of his devotees in this case narad muni is acting and he's not even taking away he's actually taking away really in a strong manner from some of the other entities this from bhagavatam this is 10th canto 10th verse sorry 10th chapter and this is the deliverance of the yamla arjuna trees right the nalkovira money grief story so my request is that um just make it more participatory i would request that if prabhu ji would you would like to be able to read this translation so and we'll see how um, narad muni actually um gets into the mode of actually taking away something from nalkovir and money grief please prabhu ji prabhu ji we cannot hear you king parikshit inquired from sukhdev goswami o oh great and powerful saint what was the cause of nalkovira's and money grievers having been cursed by narad muni what did they do that was so abominable that even narada the great sage became angry at them kindly describe this to me should i continue yes prabhu ji sukhdev goswami said o king parikshit because the two sons of kuvera had been elevated to the association of lord shiva of which they were very much proud they were allowed to wander in a garden attached to kailash hill on the bank of mandakini river taking advantage of this they used to drink a kind of liquor called varuni accompanied by women singing after them they would wander in that garden of flowers their eyes always rolling in intoxication so the prabhu ji mentions over here in the purport it's not over here saying material advantages afforded to persons associated with or devoted to lord shiva so that's something to watch out that that's what happens so um yeah prabhu ji you want to read the next one please go um, there are about 15 verses over here within the waters of the mandakini ganges which were crowded with gardens of lotus flowers the two sons of kuvera would enjoy young girls just like two male elephants enjoying in the water with female elephants o maharaj parikshit by some auspicious opportunity for the for the two boys the great saint devrishi De- devrishi narad once i appeared there by chance seeing them intoxicated with rolling eyes he could understand their situation yeah so one thing to watch out is they sing by some auspicious opportunity so how is it auspicious that we'll understand let's go on upon seeing narad the naked young girls of the demigods were very much ashamed afraid of being cursed they covered their bodies with their garment garments but the two sons of kuvera did not so did did not do so instead not caring about narad they remained naked so they were really really lost right so next one seeing the two sons of the demigods naked and intoxicated by opulence and false prestige they were they were shri narad in order to show them special mercy decided to give them a special curse does he spoke as follows thank you prabhu ji so i will continue after that so if you look at that in the sanskrit part it says shri mada andhav being blinded with false prestige and opulence and so th- that is the state of those two bel- nalkovir and managrif and then from what is the uh, disposition of nadmuni anugraha arthaya for the purpose of giving special mercy right and so what happened after that narad muni said among all the attractions of material enjoyment the attraction of riches bewilders one's intelligence more than having beautiful body features taking birth in an aristocratic family and being learned when one is uneducated but falsely puffed up by wealth the result is that one engages his wealth in enjoying wine women and gambling so a critical thing to note over here is he is saying for people especially people who are uh, affected by rajas amongst the four things the riches the four things are 
attractive body, highly aristocratic birth, being learned or being rich, the four Bs. Out of them, Sri Madat, that is the one, the riches, that is the one that is most dangerous. So, after that, then he sings, unable to control their senses, rascals who are falsely proud of the riches or their birth in aristocratic families are so cruel that to maintain their perishable bodies, which they think will never grow old or die, they will kill poor animals without mercy. Sometimes they kill animals merely to enjoy an excursion. So that is madat, right? In, in mud, big in mud. When living, one may be proud of one's body, thinking oneself a very big man, minister, president, or even demigod. But whatever one may be, after death, his body will turn into worms, into stool, or into ashes. If one kills poor animals to satisfy the temporary whims of the body, one does not know that he will suffer in his next birth. For such a sinful miscreant must go to hell and suffer the results of his actions. So conditioned souls only see this life. They don't see things outside his life. Top-down consciousness starts with telling you there is something subtle going on. Life is beyond this. This is just life. It has been there forever and it will go on forever. So, so this is called Dev Sangya. Sangitam, the body now known as for a very exalted person. So, and they are into Bhut Dukh, a person who does not accept the Shastik injunctions. So that is what state of typical conditioned souls are. Then, so he continues thinking, Narad Muni, while alive, does this body belong to its employer, or to the self, to the father, the mother, or the mother's father? There are nine people who have been put as candidate. Does it belong to the person who takes it away by force, to the slave master who purchases it, or to the son who burns it in the fire? Or if the body is not burned, does it belong to the dogs that eat it? Well, many places, I think there's a community that actually leaves the body for vultures. I think it's at the Parsi community, if I'm right. Among the many possible claimants, who is the rightful claimant? So all Nadmuni is contemplating, why are these people going around like that? I mean, all for the body? Not to ascertain this, but instead to maintain the body by sinful activities is not good. So if you do not understand where this body is coming from and who does it belong to, that's not good. So next, this body after all is produced by the unmanifested nature and again annihilated and merged in the natural elements. So another aspect, one is that what is the current state, the previous verse, and this verse talking about well, what happens in, this, in respect to time, this Kala Chakra, the Kala from this world, right? where things start and end. So it's not like the body is going to exist forever. Therefore, it is the common property of everyone. So that is the conclusion that Prabhupada's purport is telling here, that it doesn't really belong to anyone. Under the circumstances, who but a rascal claims this property as his own? And while maintaining it, commits such sinful activities as killing animals just to satisfy his whims. Unless one is a rascal, one cannot commit such sinful activities. Atheistic fools and rascals who are very much proud of wealth fail to see things as they are. Therefore, returning them to poverty is the proper ointment for their eyes so they may see things as they are. Now we're getting to the crux of why Hari or one of his dev devotees would do something, right? So that they can get this proper ointment for their eyes. It's called Gyan Chakshusha in a way, right? At least a poverty-stricken man can realize how painful poverty is and therefore he will not want others to be in a painful condition like his own. So by seeing, and this is the example is given, by seeing their faces, one whose body has been pricked by pins can understand the pain of others who are pin pricked. Realizing that this pain is the same for everyone, he does not want others to suffer in this way. But one who has never been pricked by pins cannot understand this pain. So you now we all want that somehow our life smoothly continues on, even when we are into spirituality. But the fact is, unless you understand the pain, or unless you totally surrender to Krishna. There is no shortcut out of this material world. A poverty-stricken man, Sanad Muni continues pondering, a poverty-stricken man must automatically undergo austerities and penances because he does not have will to possess anything. Thus, so yag I don't know, but tapa comes at least for free for poor people. Thus his false prestige is vanquished. Always in need of food, shelter and clothing, he must be satisfied with what is obtained by the mercy of providence. Undergoing such compulsory austerity is good for him because this purifies him and completely frees him from false ego. Anchor, right? Austerity 
always hungry longing for sufficient food a poverty stricken man gradually becomes weaker and weaker having no extra potency his senses are automatically pacified a poverty stricken man therefore is unable to perform harmful envious activities this is a very important thing we inadvertently do these harmful envious activities either we do it inadvertently or they inadvertently come to us and while we consciously jump into it is very difficult to prevent ourselves i think there is a episode somewhere in mahabharata where i think karna tells uh, krishna that um, this is the way st- things are and i think even duryodhan at one point says that i cannot help i know that these are wrong tendencies in me but i cannot help them so in other words such a man automatically gains the results of austerities and penances adopted voluntarily by saintly persons saintly persons may freely associate with those who are poverty stricken but not with those which are rich so that's an advantage for people who are poor or at least well poor or not poor but who are not rich right because saintly persons will easily interact with them a poverty stricken man by association with saintly person very soon becomes uninterested material desires so there you go you see even for a poor person even though he is well positioned he is consciousness is not going to evolve into spirituality or, or the, the, the top level aspect it only comes when a saintly person associates so that's the top down aspect of it it has to come from outside but all we can do is prepare ourselves for it and when we are very rich and we are madat mad andat then we don't prepare ourselves for that a poverty stricken man associated with saintly person very soon becomes uninterested in material desires and the dirty things within the core of his heart are cleansed away saintly person sadhus think of krishna 24 hours a day they have no other interest why should people neglect the association of such exalted spiritual personalities and try to associate with materialists taking shelter of non devotees most of whom are proud and rich so now with that contemplation he comes to this conclusion therefore since the two persons drunk with the liquor named varuni or madhavi and unable to control their senses have been blinded by the pride of celestial opulence why because they are the sons of kuvera and have become attached to women i should relieve them of their false prestige and how does he do that these two young men nal kuvera and mani grieve are by fortune the sons of the great demigod kuvera but because of false prestige and madness after drinking liquor they are so fallen that they are naked but cannot understand that they are and people in the condition well are not much different they are drinking the liquor of um, rajas and they are tasting it and they are trying to enjoy life over here and they are so fallen that they are naked they don't understand that there is nothing that they have on them everything else is coming from the past karma which is a system that is provided by krishna it is not something that they have earned or, or achieved in this life but they cannot understand that they are so i'm just trying to draw a parallel therefore because they are like living trees for trees are naked but not conscious these two young men should receive the bodies of trees so that's the curse this will be proper punishment from them nonetheless after they become trees and until they are released by my mercy they will have remembrance of their past sinful activities that you see the mercy aspect right when when a non sadhu curses then he is taking his anger out whereas in the case of um, sadhu or sat person when he curses then it is for purification so while he is giving them a life which is not the most desirable life he is also giving him the remembrance so that they can remember their past sinful activities moreover by my special favor after the expiry of 100 years by the measurement of the demigods they will be able to see the supreme personality of god at vasudeva face to face and thus revive their real position as devotees so that is what it is um i think we can go the last so having thus spoken the great saint devrish had returned to his ashram known as narayan ashram in nalkuvar manigrip became two in arjun trees and just to conclude that this actually really ended up into something positive since this is from bhagavatam 10 canto we'll see what happened to the krishna leela the supreme personality of god is shri krishna so he had already been tied by his mother and that's the background right to fulfill the truthfulness of the words of the greatest devotee narada slowly went to that spot where the twin arjuna trees were standing although these two young men are the sons of very rich kuvera i have nothing to do with them so that's what krishna is thinking dev rishidad is my very dear and affectionate devotee and therefore because he wanted me to come to face to face with them i must do so for their deliverance so krishna is not delivering nalkovar and manigri he is delivering because on his own because narad muni wanted it 
and Krishna is in debt of the Atmuni because he's pure devotee. So that's what, if you really want to make God work for you, which we should not as a pure devotee, but if you want to align yourself with God, if you do that, then God will automatically align with you and what your thoughts are. So, and if you are a true devotee, which that money is, then our thoughts are pure. It always ends up into something good. So, in this case, we can see this so-called curse actually end, ends up into them getting liberated. So, this is the favorable curse that is there. So, through this story, Premi is trying to give um, um, console or rather uh, tell um, Karmi that, hey, don't worry, things will not be that bad. And here's an example. So, um, yeah, sorry. Let's go on back to the story. There you go. Right. So, is Karmi satisfied by the story? Um, yeah, understands. Nadmuni devotees do good. But that doesn't mean I'm into it yet. I'm still scared. That's what he's thinking. So, but he's now curious about uh, how Nadmuni did that. Because if it had not been explained through Bhagavatam, he would not have gotten the hang of it. So he just makes a comment saying, it is indeed difficult to understand a true devotee. Isn't that true? And Ka so this is, as you can see, the red colored items are wordings from uh, Karmi. And Premi tells him, CC verse 23-29, Yana chitte krishna prema karay udaya tanra vakya kriya mudra vigyana bujaya Bhujaya means understood, right? So, understand. So, what it means is, even the most learned man cannot understand word activities and symptoms of a person situated in love of Godhead. So, someone who is a devotee is very difficult to understand what they Because their life is not external. We, we as conditioned souls, at least definitely me, uh, would try to interpret things from the external aspect. And consciousness is subtle. Top-down consciousness definitely is. So even material consciousness, we can try to comprehend and figure out. And it's also very difficult. So when he makes that comment, then um, Premi now tells, let me tell you a katha from Chaitanya Leela, coming from Adi and Madhya Khanda, from Chaitanya Bhagavat, written by His Grace Srila Vindavan Thastakur. He's holding this. So he's talking now a story about how Haridas Thakur himself was misjudged. So at this point, I would request um, um, dear devotees, if you could help me, please participate in this by reading uh, this. So, this Adi, Chaitanya Bhagavat, Adi 16, chapter, page 73. So, let me go there, page 16. Page 73. So here's the story about Haridas Thakur, how at one particular occasion it was difficult to understand a devotee. And um, I've tried to uh, pick up stories from Chaitanya Bhagavat which are not there in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So there's novelty there, but that said, devotees want to hear the same story also of Krishna. But because I am not that level, I just try to present those stories which you may not have heard about. So if you have, please pardon me, but I am sure as good devotees you'll still enjoy them. So um, Prabhuji, you want to read Prabhuji? Go ahead, please. So from this line onwards. Um, it's not showing? Okay, sorry. Yes, can you read it now or no, that's too little? Yes, what would you word from here? The local Muslim authority known as the Kazi became envious of Haridas Thakur's popularity and reported to the Nawab. This oh. man is Neither. higher. Yes, sir. This man is acting like a Hindu. Arrest him and punish him appropriately. The envious words of the sinful Kazi sparked an immediate response from the equally sinful Nawab, and Haridas Thakur was arrested and brought forth. Having received the mercy of Lord Krishna, Haridas had no fear of the Muslim authorities, nor even of death itself. With the name of the Lord on his lips, Haridas appeared before the Nawab. 
So this is the background is that he is trying to chant, and he is at that point of time they were Muslims were the ruler, right? So go ahead, Prabhuji. When devotees and other pious persons in the locality of the Nawaz Palace heard this, that the Saint Haridas was coming, they were extremely happy. But when they subsequently learned that he was coming as a captive of the Muslim ruler, they were horrified. Previously, many religious people had been terrorized and incarcerated by the Muslims. Those prisoners were happy to learn that Haridas might be joining them. His presence in their miserable situation would certainly eradicate their suffering. The prisoners even requested the prison wardens to allow them unrestricted association with Srila Haridas. When Srila Thakur was brought into the prison, he looked compassionately at all the prisoners who immediately prostrated themselves at his lotus feet. His long, graceful arms, which extended to his knees, his lotus eyes, and his charming moon-like face enchanted everyone. They offered their most sincere respects to the saint, and love for Krishna stirred in their hearts. Srila Haridas Thakur was pleased with the tremendous devotion which had grown in the hearts of the prisoners, and he had blessed them. Just remain as you are. So, yeah, please note this line. So, he's blessing and he's saying, just remain as you are. Yeah, please go ahead. But the miserable prisoners could not grasp the depth of that blessing and they felt quite dejected. Do you understand why they are dejected? Because they are prisoners. So, what were they expecting? Somehow this person will get me out or something, right? He's a great saint. So, he said, just remain as you are. So, misunderstood. Yeah, please go ahead. Haridas could see the misunderstanding and compassionately explained himself. My blessing to you is that you will remain as you are, but please do not feel dejected. I could never wish you any misfortune. I simply desire that the love you now feel for Krishna should always remain the same. From now on, chant Lord Krishna's name and constantly remember his pastimes, inspiring one another to retain his devotion. Violence and tyranny are absent in the spiritual world, so sincerely cry out for Krishna's help and constantly think of Him. When you are released from this prison, do not return to your old materialistic ways nor associate with, the de with degraded or sinful people because one can never cultivate love for the Supreme Lord Krishna by living a mundane life. You should know for certain that Krishna is unobtainable by the materialistic person. A materially engrossed mind is shaped by unwanted, mischievous desires. The attachment for wife, children, family, and other such illusions brings about destruction. If by divine arrangement any person reaches the platform of pure devotion toward Krishna, certain realizations dawn on him and he gradually becomes detached from material life, giving himself instead to the worship of the Supreme Lord. If that person returns again to his materialistic life, his mind will become contaminated by capricious, mischievous desires. Yeah, so there you go. My, if that person returns again to his materialistic life, his mind will become contaminated by capricious, mischievous desires. Yeah, so next slide, please. I certainly do not want you to remain prisoners forever, but I do pray that you develop a distaste for material pleasures. Please chant the holy name of the Lord. My blessing was meant to free you from your present miserable condition and to ensure you that you will remain happy in love of Krishna. I look upon everyone equally and wish the best for all living entities. I pray that you may develop unflinching devotion for Krishna. Do not be sad. You will be freed within two or three days. That, so, he does want them to get freed, right? But he didn't say it like that because he's only thinking about Krishna and saying, whether you're freed from this material prison or not, it won't make much difference for you. You're still going to go do karma, whether inside or outside. What's more important is be as you are with respect to submitting yourself to Krishna. But people interpret based on their own conditioned life, right? Go ahead, Prabhu. Please finish this. You may believe me. Once you leave the prison, you may live in the forest or you may live in your home but always think of Krishna and try to cultivate spiritual life. Having showered his unrestricted mercy upon the prisoners, Haridas went before the Nawab. All right, thank you. So here was one example of 
when Haridas Thakur was misjudged. So then at that point of time, um, Karmi had a prashna saying, do devotees suffer? Because if, if he was curious, it looks like Srila Haridas Thakur had gone to the prison, right? Along with other people. So is this suffering involved? I mean, that doesn't look like a very exciting prospect if I have to go and do Krishna consciousness and end up in a prison. So we'll read a smiling Thakur story. Page 74, mid to 74. So let me quickly go there. Yeah, this is the Dutch devotee suffer story. You want to speak? So this is where he has now gone to the Nawab and the Nawab is now um, taking it, trying to take some decision saying, hey, you're a Muslim, Srila Haridas Thakur, he's born as a Muslim and why are you chanting these Hindu names, uh, God's names? And um, so at that point of time, he's got his Kazi and they're trying to deliberate and give some decision on him. Good. Do devotees suffer? Lash him in 22 market paces until he dies, replied the envious Kazi. There is no other judgment I find appropriate. If he lives despite the punishment, then I will conclude that our big scholar has spoken the truth. The sentries were called in and the orders boomed out. Lash him until he breathes his last. The sin a Muslim incurs by becoming a Hindu can only be punished by death. The Qazi's envious designs had fructified in the heart of the Nabab and Srila Haridas was dragged away by its sentries. From one market place to another, they beat him mercilessly, their black hearts consumed by hate for the pure devotee of the Lord. But Haridas was a pure soul, completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord. So he faithfully chanted Lord Krishna's holy name. So absorbed was his in the fervent chanting, fervent chanting that he did not feel any pain. Good-hearted and pious people could not bear to see the torture inflicted on such an innocent person. Some begged the sentries to stop, while others predicted, if they continue to torture this good man, the entire kingdom will be ruined. Many of them cursed the king to die, while some tried to stop the sentries physically. One person threw himself at the feet of the sentries and pleaded, I will give you any reward you like if you stop this merciless beating. But none of these protests evoked the slightest mercy from the sentries who continued to drag Srila Haridas Thakur from one marketplace to another, lashing him relentlessly. By the grace of Lord Krishna, Haridas felt little pain in his body, just like Prahlad in the Srimad Bhagavatam who was tortured by demons. Haridas never never suffered at all. Not only was Haridas freed from his pain, whoever remembers the story of Srila Parip- ha- Haridas will also be saved from the miseries of life. Throughout his ordeal, Haridas' one emotion was pity for centuries. O oh Lord Krishna, please be merciful upon these poor souls so they may not be punished because of me. It's like Jesus Christ, right? So basically, he's not worried about himself. He's worried about the sinner. He's poor guys. And he never suffered at all. Yeah, please continue. Nothing could stop the insensitive sentries who were detem- determined to see their assignment through to its deathly end. Yet for all their beating, Haridas showed no signs of distress as he was absorbed in remembering the holy name of Lord Krishna. At last, the guards had to stop in amazement. How can a human being survive such a brutal beating? Any ordinary man would have died after the beating. We gave in the first two or three marketplaces. We have lashed him continuously through 22 marketplaces and he still shows no sign of either pain or death. Occasionally, he looks up to smile at us. They concluded that he must be a saintly person. So, you can see, he is not only not troubled by it, he is actually smiling. And that is amazing. <laughs> it's as if he's got a coat of um, armor and then the lashing doesn't even affect him. Yeah, I think that is all for this particular episode. Let's go on. So to highlight this so that this becomes obvious that see how he actually smiling Thakur. 
So anyway, coming back to Karmi and Premi. So now Karmi had a logical next question. He says, well, do, they, do devotees possess mystic power? Right? Because it looks like in this case, it's, this is supernatural mysticism by definition means something that is, you cannot conclude basically based on your worldly or the physical world. So mystic means something is supernatural. So, So the title is Sarva Shakti Samanvita. Do devotees have all shaktis? Do, do devotees possess mystic power? Prabhu, you want to read? Huh? Prabhu can read. Oh, actually, Prabhu. Yeah. Do devotees possess mystic power? Oh, please read from here. Oh, Haridasa. Oh, Haridas. They pleaded, because of you, we shall certainly be punished. When the Kazi sees that, despite our beating, you are still alive, he shall certainly kill us instead. If my survival brings such terrible misfortune to you, replied Haridas, then I shall definitely give up my body. Just see how I die. So the sentries are worried that they were unable to kill Haridas Thakur, and the Haridas Thakur is not having compassion for them. <laughs> he is not even worried that he is last at 22 marketplaces. So what does it say? Srila Das Hari Thakur immediately fell into trance. A pure devotee of the Supreme Lord possesses all mystic power. So without any hesitation, Srila Hari Haridas fell lifeless, without a trace of breath. The Muslim sentries were astonished but gladly brought the body of Srila Haridas to the Nawab. When the Nawab or ordered the sentries to bury him, the Qazi protested. No, if he is buried, he will be saved and ultimately gain entrance into heaven. So look at the envy there from the Kazi. He is not happy that he has been, Sri Lahalya Stakur has been lashed and at least from his eyes, he's already died and killed. No, he doesn't even want him to enter heaven. Enviousness, right? Go ahead, please. Although he got the high birth of a Muslim, he behaved like a low Hindu. Therefore, it is proper for him to be thrown in the Ganges, to suffer eternally like the other lost Hindus. By being bur buried, he will, be he will become elevated and freed from his sin. So, while he is obviously envious, you can see the decision he is going on to is to be thrown in the Ganges, which according to the Vedic scriptures is definitely a holy place to end up in, right? So, this is how God will try to save people who even though by vagaries of time or by other people's um, power of volition, they may try to do something bad. Just by this sentence itself, you can figure that out. But anyway, let's see, go on to see what happens. On the Qazi's order, the sentries picked up the body of Haridas Thakur and carried him to the Ganges. Haridas remained in his deathly trance, meditating on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Spirit of, Lord, of the Lord Krishna then descended into the body of Srila uh, Thakur and he became so heavy that it was impossible to move him. The strongest sentries came forward to push him into the waters, but he remained in deep trance and could not be moved. Haridas had already drowned in the ocean of love of Lord Krishna and he had no perception of the world around him. He knew not if he were still embodied or wandering somewhere in the universe or deep in the water of the Ganges. Just like Prahlad Maharaj, Haridas Thakur had the spiritual ability to constantly remember the Supreme Lord. Such an extraordinary capability was not surprising for Haridas heart. For Haridas heart was, per, was the permanent residence of Lord Kaur Chandra. This entire episode with Srila Haridas Thakur is a replication of the heroic activities of Sri Hanuman in Sri Lanka. Indrajit, Ravana's son, had sent the Brahmastra, a weapon given to him by Lord Brahma, to capture Hanuman. Hanuman could easily have escaped it, but to show respect to the potency of Lord Brahma, Hanuman allowed himself to be bound to by the Brahmastra. Similarly, Srila Haridas Thakur could have escaped the punishment of the Muslims, but by allowing them to torture him, he taught the world a lesson. Despite the extreme miseries of life, one must never stop chanting like the name of the name of Krishna. So as you can see, 
the devotees possess all mystic powers and they possess something which is even beyond mysticism they have compassion for people who are trying to kill them or, and lash them that is real mysticism right that is something that people even from this world cannot even fathom so it's beyond us to see this how can you be compassionate for people in this world who are really suffering but also trying to cause you torture or i mean to the pure devotees torture anyway so at that point of time now we come back to the karmi premi um he had a question saying does lord also have mystic experiences and that's a incorrect question really because lord does all the mysticism through his energies right so energies are subordinate to him but um so the answer that was giving is well seemingly yes but in leela so let's look at an example where the lord himself technically uh, experienced something which was a little mystic in nature um, and this is the story about um uh, it where nimai got initiated he has gone to uh, bodhgaya right to for doing shrad for his father who had expired who had passed away sorry and um, at that point of time he had visited all the ghats dev uttara mansa lord shri goranga went to bhim gaya shiv gaya brahma gaya so he'd gone to all of those places and at that point of time he is going to meet ishwara puri so completing his pilgrimage in all the places satisfying all the brahmana priest he returned to his place of residence he rested for a while then feeling refreshed from rest he made preparations for cooking as he completed the last preparations shri ishwara puri came to visit him intoxicated from chanting the holy name of krishna and feeling ecstatic love for the lord he walked into the room swaying as if drunk the lord immediately fell left his cooking in the kitchen and offered his respectful obeisances and sat him down comfortably laughing shri ishwara puri said oh pandita i have certainly come at the right time the lord replied when good fortune has smiled upon me today by sending you here i pray that you will please accept some rice prasad shila puri pad smiled and said but then what will you have the lord replied i will cook some rice for me now shila puri pad asked what is what is the use of cooking again whatever you have already cooked let us share that amongst ourselves smiling the lord replied whatever is already prepared that is all for you in no time i can prepare something afresh please do not feel hesitant you eat first so he is offering right because ishwara puri at that point of time as is not his guru yet but in mentally he is already made up that decision so offering to ishwara puri what he had cooked for himself you want to read prabhu this one continue from here with that background here yeah. offering to ishvara puri what he had cooked for himself the lord went back into the kitchen and began preparing food once again feeling great happiness the lord exhibited so much mercy to ishvara puri and shri pad puri also had no other thought in mind other than krishna the lord served shri pad puri with his own hands and shri pad puri relished the lord's cooking with great delight While this was going on Rama Devi the goddess of fortune personally appeared and cooked for the lord unseen by anyone in the kitchen so this is the so called special experience that lord himself had he didn't tell rama devi to come and do it but rama devi being spiritual consort for the lord knows what the lord wants so cares for her by her service so but let's go on because there's some more excitement in this story not so much about mystic experience but some more things that we can learn from go ahead please after seeing that after seeing that shri pad puri was fully satisfied the lord sat down to eat these transcendental activities of the lord and his devotees are so wonderful that anyone who hears them with faith and sincerity is immediately granted unalloyed devotional service at the lotus feet of lord krishna after the meal the lord arranged for shri pad puri to rest as a disciple would serve a spiritual master the lord began massaging shri pad puri with scented oil who can describe the elevated position of shri ishvara puri shri chaitanya the supreme personality of godhead acting like an ideal disciple went to see the appearance place of shri ishvara puri the lord said i offer my obeisances to the village of kumarahata where shri ishvara puri appeared 
The Lord was so spiritually moved by this place that he shed profuse tears of love for Ishvara Puri and continuously repeated his name. I think we can stop there probably. So what I wanted to point is that um, he is going to the place of the birth of his spiritual master, right? And that itself is something that says what is the how attached and how he wants to serve his spiritual master. We especially in US are waiting for a spiritual master, especially if you're not initiated here, if you don't have a local guru, then people don't take that much trouble these days. Even if you have a local spiritual master, then the spiritual master kind of visits the disciple. It's not that the disciple is trying to go out and do something. But this mood of service is where you do everything, even just visit the place where that, that holy being was born. So I just wanted to mention that as well. And then I think there's something else which is of information that he was initiated by Srila Prabhupada within mantra concept of 10 syllables. So some information there from Chaitanya Bhagavad. So anyway, come back to um, Karmi. So now he has a question, how non-devotees experience mysticism? For example, you know, then Kamsa was going around, right? And he heard, he had Devaki and Vasudev. Devaki's eighth son will basically kill him. So this question is, I understand devotees can experience mystic aspect. The Lord obviously is the controller, so if he experiences something which is part of his Leela, that's, yeah, it is phenomenally good, but it's not unexpected. But what about Kamsa? Why did he get to hear this thing? And the most important thing is he wants to know, is it coming from God? I mean, does God himself do it or the Lord Brahma does it? Where's this sound that he heard, Kamsa heard, it comes from? And it's very popular to say it is Akashwani. Akashwani means it's a sound that came from the sky and um, it's given in SB 10134. So while Kamsa was driving the chariot, an unembodied voice addressed to him, you foolish rascal, the eighth child of the woman you're carrying will kill you. Right? So let's see a story from um, Chaitanya Bhagavat about what this mystic experience was. So, while we are not talking about non-devotees anymore, I think we are focusing now on the question that where does this voice come from, the so-called Akashwani, right? Um, I have not read about it in other scriptures, but fortunately in Chaitanya Bhagavat, it does give this information. So it's a good uh, um, incident. So yeah, please go ahead and read. Prabhu. Yeah, go ahead. Akashwani or Asari Ravak, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 1, Text 34. That's where this happened to Kamsa. So that's the reference. One morning in the early hours, the Lord, desiring to go to Mathura, slipped out of the house without anyone's notice. He was, he was in a state of ecstatic trance. He cried to Krishna as he walked, O oh Lord Krishna, my dear Lord, where can I, can I find you? After some distance, he heard a divine voice saying, Do not proceed to Mathura now. The time will come, then you will go to Mathura. But for now, return to Navadvipa, to your house. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord of the Vaikuntha planet. You have come into this material world with all your eternal associates to liberate the entire world. You will propagate the congregational chanting of the holy name of God all over the universe and distribute freely to everyone the most treasured object, love of Godhead. You are omniscient, you already know everything. We know the reason why you have descended to this material world. You have come to distribute the most desired object, whose, whose nect nectarian taste bewitches the mind of even Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Sanaka and other sages, and whose glories Lord Anantashesh continuously sings of. Stop. So, if at this point of time, if you try to think about it, the voice is saying that Lord Goranga is great or the greatest. But then it is also commanding him, saying, do not proceed to Mathura now, right? And he's also saying, I know everything. You are the Supreme Personality. You have to do this. You have to do that. So is there someone beyond the Lord who is commanding things? I mean, if there is one, that would make sense. But is there one? So let's go on, please. Lead this line. This is the crux. We are your eternal servants in it. And it is our duty to remind you of your incarnation. We place this request at your lotus feet. 
you are the maintainer of all living entities the supreme independent truth no one can obstruct you from carrying out your own pure desires so my lord please return to your home and very shortly you shall go to mathura the lord shri gorasundar returned home feeling very happy after hearing the divine message that's it so as you can see this was a good reference in chaitanya bhagavat that says this so called akashvani very popular term but which in shrimad bhagavat was referred to a sharira vak vak means voice sharira means obviously body so a sharira means without any body this voice is coming from something that does, is not embodied person so it is uh, it is not really akashvani because normally if it's akashvani is like a broadcast which everyone else will be able to hear and with a sharira vak means only selected person or that particular person can hear that right so uh, as it clarifies over here it is coming from eternal source so it looks like there's some demi god or someone who's actually responsible for giving out these so called asharira vak and uh, they sometimes they are omens or sometimes they are just um, announcements sometimes they are directions like in this case but whatever the case be that's also a duty that is delegated so uh, why i bring this point up is that um, if you don't come with a vedic background if you come with a non it looks a western religious background and things like that there are situations like these but over there it is very heavy on um it's a it's a relatively a bottom up approach for religion so it's very heavy on what people are doing right now and what should they do to change to align themselves to god but the god part is not mentioned in detail or there are no more much research not much information about that so therefore it is very easy to conclude over there if with that kind of background say oh it is supernatural must be coming from god like i was talking to one person who follows islam and he was saying i don't believe what vedas are saying and his logic was god is supremely powerful why will he need demigods to control this worldly conditioned soul kind of logical argument but that's because he does not understands god's magnanimity and obviously he doesn't understand many other aspects about how the jeeva's soul works through what i'm saying is that people come to conclusions based on the information that they have and unless you read more of scriptures keep yourself not hold or barred by saying this is the way i am going to see things bottoms up but top down keep it open learn more things put them in get a better picture and even after doing all of that and even if you live for millions and millions of years you can never understand lord's glories ananta shetha right most poignant example he keeps glorifying the lord for eternity and they say that he is not able to glorify him properly with his thousands of mouths or hoods anyway so coming back some funda there but so we are running short of time so it looks like i have to hurry things up so it says that premi is in a trance now so th- this is another unique aspect that once you find out from chaitanya bhagavat the lord not only doesn't want to control he is naturally the controller but doesn't want to that's what he is delegated and that's why brahma vishnu mahesh are called ishavasya they are the, the ishwar of this material universe and there are millions of material universes and they control this universe so he's delegated everything the only thing that he keeps to himself is literally nothing and the only thing that he the only thing that he is recipient of is the love from his subjects and even that he gives back so and that is what the interaction is and that's the only thing that he is looking forward to and that is the krishna aspect the bhagwan aspect of the lord so uh, anyway now that he is understanding that these wonderful stories are going on and karma is now getting to um, higher aspects of spirituality so that means the god doesn't have to behave like god he can actually now go freely into his leela mode so he goes into a trance and hereafter he now starts talking about things that are not even prompted by karma because now he's living in a different world so here's a story about imbalance of life heirs and since we are running short of time i will actually try to hurry things up so after uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu returns from bodhgaya he starts looking and seeing krishna everywhere and thinking about krishna and that's when he's already got initiated and um, my dear friends from bengal also mentioned this saying yeah he's a great uh, saint they don't understand the krishna avatar part as like something happened to him after he came back from gaya but the fact is that he was already in that mood before gaya but he just did not manifest it so it manifested after that so um the education that i was doing and is a pun on the word infested infested is normally used in a negative sense and he was a teacher so nimai was a teacher 
in with the students who was teaching sanskrit to them and his teaching style changed so in the mood of a west of our lord vishamba always saw the whole world filled with krishna after he came back day and night he would hear either chant the holy name of krishna so all of the lord students would come early in the morning to study and the lord of the universe would sit down to teach them but now the lord did not speak anything except krishna the students ask what is indicated by all the different letters and the lord would reply all letters indicated only narayana the students asked how do all the letters become perfected and the lord replied by krishna's glance the students asked o oh, pandita please explain properly so they are not getting the hang of things what's going on and chatanya mahaprabhu replies you should always remember krishna then you will properly understand my explanations the process of worshiping krishna is explained in the beginning middle and end of the vedic literature hearing the lord's explanation the students began to laugh someone said i think he is suffering from a disturbance of the air so that is a little indian thing but basically indigestion yeah i want to speak to me that's that it is an ayurveda term oh is it i see and in balance of the years yeah so that is if you remember that was the topic of this particular incident as an imbalance of life years so the students asked how do you spelling like this now and the lord replied my expressions are exactly according to the scriptures if you don't understand now then this afternoon i will explain nicely right so then they went to his teacher gangadas pandit sorry i am little hurrying up and we we'll read the underlined part now whatever nimai pandit explains every word related to krishna since he has come home from gaya he has not explain anything other than krishna he continually chants lord krishna's name in great ecstasy sometimes he laughs or roars out loud sometimes all the hair of his whole body stand on end hari palation in this way different symptoms manifest in him when he sits down to teach he connects the root of every single word to krishna all his purports and commentaries describe krishna this new transformation in him seems so alien to us oh pandita please tell us what should we do so now they gone and complained to gangadas pandit who was actually the person who is organizing this patshala where um nimai pandit is ex- is teaching so what does gangadas pandit do he actually starts smiling i think somewhere over it mentions so then he calls uh, nimai pandit and says my dear vishambar so vishambar is his name i must tell you something and then he explains that your grandfather and your father and everyone is very learned you shouldn't do exactly like this so he gives him some concepts right but i'm jumping over so when they meet in the in the afternoon um so they talk about dhatu the students inquire what is the definition of verbal roots and the lord replied it is the energy of lord krishna my dear students i will now explain the aphorisms of verbal roots dhatu let me see who can refute my explanation there have been many kings with beautiful bodies decorated with golden ornaments flower gardens and sandalwood paste people say they control lakshmi the goddess of fortune and yamaraj the presiding demigod of religious principles let me explain to you what happens when dhatu or life leaves their body where does this their physical beauty their decoration their power go so they turn to ashes and some are buried under the earth so see how he is going philosophical and into krishna by explaining concept of dhatu dhatu is a sanskrit term lord krishna is present in everybody in the form of this energy dhatu or his life living entities love this and they offer devotion to him all these other so called scholars and teachers are very confused they don't understand the real meaning of dhatu so he goes on to explain dhatu and then if you look at it further he is just worship he who has given liberation to agasur so then he's forgotten dhatu at that point of time the liber- who has given liberation to agasur bakasur or putta by killing them at the point of death ajamila carried out his name and now he's totally gone into krishna so he's not explaining dhatu so much as he's explaining krishna but he gave attachment for his son remembering lord narayan that's ajamila right and went to vaikuntha simply take shelter of the supreme lord lotus feet of lord krishna by serving whose lotus feet lord shiva is naked for whose serving whose feet lakshmi devi is reverential the glories of whose feet lord anand says as always singing those lotus feet of lord krishna you should worship with straw between your teeth so it goes on the students say you are given the correct meaning and then actually before that 
he comes back out of his trance and after a while lord vishambar came out of his trance and looked at everyone was feeling a little embarrassed he asked how are my expression or verbal roots the student replied you have given the correct meaning who is able to refute expressions on the word even our fathers were not able to so then we jump on the lord said can any of you explain whether my wind disorders are confusing my mind so he is also accepting maybe something is going wrong and is to explain the nature of verbal roots i do not know whose nature or what am i talking about so then the students explained in every topic you simply describe the holy name of hari you have described only lord krishna in every sutra translation and purport who is qualified to understand this explanation of yours the transformation that covers over you when you hear about krishna or his devotional service is so wonderful that we cannot think of you as an ordinary personality anyway i think it goes on and on and on for 10 days without studies and then the lord is complaining why didn't you tell me because every day when he tried to teach he goes into a trance and he teaches everything about krishna so then at some point of time he basically says okay i relieve you i will not be teaching you but the students don't want to go away from him and it says that um, the lord has completed his past times as a scholar and he now began manifesting the congressional chanting of the holy names so this is when he's moving on from his mood of a scholar which he has been in his adi lila to that of um, a congressional chanter and to as a leader and then he says shall we do kirtan and then here is one very beautiful kirtan that uh, is very dear to him so then sri chachinandan taught them by singing hari harai nama krishna yadavai nama gopala govinda shri madhusudan so anna where do you want to do that kirtan so this is so dear to lord hari right what do you want to come near and take the mic probably want to sit next to hold the mic and i face that side hari haraya nama krishna yadavaya nama i sing hari haraya nama krishna yadavaya nama hari haraya nama krishna yadavaya nama hari haraya nama krishna yadavaya nama yadavaya madavaya keshavaya nama yadavaya madavaya keshavaya nama yadavaya madavaya keshavaya nama yadavaya madavaya keshavaya nama gopal govinda ram shri madhusudan gopal govinda ram shri madhusudan giri dari gopinath madana mohan 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 shri chaitanya nityananda shri advaita sita 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 hari guru vaishnava bhagavata gita 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 jai shri rupa sanatana bhata ragunath shri rupa sanatana bhata ragunath rupa sanatana bhatta ragunath shri rupa sanatana bhatta ragunath shri jiva gopala bhatta das 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 ragunath he chai go sai kor chariyan चरण वंदन एचाय गोसाय कोरी चरण वंदन एचाय गोसाय कोरी चरण वंदन एचाय गोसाय कोरी चरण वंदन जहा होते विघ्न नाश अविष्ट पुराण जहा होते विघ्न नाश अविष्ट पुराण प्रेमी 
they had a lot of other things but looks like we need a lot more time so then um he talks about hari's nature so removing deity's devotee's fear we'll go to the last incident today this is in madhya page 98 so um because they were doing open congressional chanting they were a little rowdy you know, things get out of hand at times and with chatana map be around that was just 24 by 7 that's it so a lot of people who are like traditional so called hindu or vedic people brahmins they were a little apprehensive of this style of uh, doing things and uh, while uh, there were a lot of vaishnavas there and they were waiting that why these atheists are kind of causing these problems so in this manner news spread throughout nadia the king's boats are coming to arrest the vaishnavas the vaishnavas also heard the news and by remembering lord govinda all their fears were dissolved they said whatever the supreme lord krishna chandra wants will happen and it is for the best as long as he is there then what fear do we have for these wretched people so wretched people means atheist the shrivas pandit has been shown the mercy by this time by um, nimai lord goranga chatan mahaprabhu she was pandit was very liberal so whatever he heard he believed the fact that she was was apprehensive at heart about the muslim government was known to lord gorchandra lord gorchandra is in everyone's heart a super soul right so devotees were still not aware that supreme lord had incarnated amongst them so now sri chachinandan began to manifest himself lord vishambar fearlessly roamed about we'll jump over so when the people saw the lord they became very joyful but the atheist people felt moros he must have heard about the danger they said yet he shows no sign of fear he strolls about as though he's a prince so they don't know he's his incarnation right another atheist said listen brother i understand all this just wait and see what you see is just another trick to escape so they are thinking that whatever he's doing is all nonsense fearlessly lord vishambar looked in every direction then i'll jump onto this line the this sight immediately agitated the lord so he was seeing the beauty and agitated means he's trying to, he goes into a trance right so he forgot himself and began emitting loud sounds like roaring he kept saying i am him i am him it's inside him right and he's not come out in this condition the lord ran to shrivas house and shouted what are you doing shrivasa and she was was engaged in worshiping lord narsimha dev behind closed doors the lord kicked the door and called out who are you worshiping who are you meditating on just see the person whom you are worshiping he is standing before you so now the lord is coming and revealing himself shrivas's meditation broke and he looked all around he saw vishambara sitting in virasan with four arms holding the conch disk club and lotus the lord was rolling like a mad lion he slapping his left thigh with roaring loudly Shrivasa's body trembled and he sat off struck he was unable to speak the lord called out oh shrivasa all this time you did not know who i am due to your loud sankirtan and advaita's loud calling i left vaikuntha and came to this world with my family now you are living completely complacent without recognizing me and advaita has left me behind on gone back to santipura i have come to protect the pious and punish the miscreants there is no need for you to worry just chant prayers to me so he's trying to pacify him seeing the lord before him shivasa's eyes filled with tears of love all his fears were destroyed by the lord assuring words currents of joy surged through his body and he stood up with folded hands and offered prayers to the lord shivata pandit was a great devotee having received the lord's order he began to offer appropriate prayers to him he recited the same prayers that were offered by lord brahma and i will read a little bit of the prayers may one or two line my dear lord you are eternally worshipable supreme personality of godhead therefore i worship you the son of maharaj nanda and i worship the lotus feet of lord vishambara whose complexion is like a new monsoon cloud and who wears a yellow dress i offer my obeisances to the lotus feet of the son of mother sachi whose ornament consists of new gunja seeds so gunja seeds is actually um, they call it poisonous seeds but it's very uh, important seed they use in ayurveda it has to be treated through various things before it is used as a medicine and a peacock feather my obeisances unto the lotus feet of gangadas pandit student 
So basically, it's a very potent seed. Who is decorated with flower garland and holds a preparation of yogurt rice in his hand. Thus, Shiva's pundit prayed like Brahma unto the Lord, Lord's lotus feet. He freely spoke whatever words of glorification came to his mouth. He continued, You are Vishnu, you are Krishna, you are the Lord of all sacrifices, the holiest of rivers, the Ganga emanates from your lotus feet. Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva like bumblebees at your lotus feet. So, jumping on, sorry. <laughs> you have placed me in this. So, now he's lamenting about his life, right? Like um, Prahlad Maharaj. You have placed me in this. No, sorry, like um, Dhruva. Dhruva was lamenting, right? When he, when he met Vishnu. So, you have placed me in this illusory family life, which is dark, well of forgetfulness. My human birth has been wasted because I did not recognize you. In various ways, you have deluded me. My Lord, going to the extent of carrying my clothes and baskets. So, before that, uh, Nima used to serve everyone, right? And Srivas Pandit was a recognized elderly, respectable Brahmin of Vaishnava, really, in, in, the, in the community. So, and I was unable to recognize you. I do not fear for those things. So now he's saying, while I lament that, I do not fear them anymore because I have met you, my Lord. The Lord smiled after hearing Srivas' prayers. Being merciful to Srivas, the Lord said, Bring your wife, children, whoever else is in the house, and let them see my form. The Lord said, along with his wife, worship my feet and ask for any boon that your heart desires. Following the Lord's instructions, she was went into his house and then they came, all came and then they started worshipping him and, and then he, they asked him, gives him a blessing. He says, may your attachment and attraction for me increase. The Lord spoke loudly like a roaring lion and addressed Shiva said, and this is the part where even though Premi had gone into a trance and speaking like Lord Chaitanya, which he is an incarnation of, he's still able to connect back to the dots. Because remember where uh, the whole story started with Karmi and Premi's dialogue, where he was scared when he was pondering that Sri Hari actually robs everything, and then he was so scared that will the Lord take away everything, right? So here's a story that comes back and says, how this is how the Lord protects his devotees. So the Lord spoke loudly like a roaring lion, and addressing Srivasa said, do you want to try Prabhuji reading? It's only two, three minutes. Because we missed you. Uh, oh Shrivas. Roar you, like I like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh Shrivas, are you afraid of something? I have heard that the king's boat has been sent to capture you. Whatever living entities there are throughout the unlimited universes, I direct their activities according to my sweet will. The king can only order your capture if I, being situated in his heart, prompt him to do so. So step number one, so please continue, but this is the first protection he's saying. I am the super soul. So if you align with me, I am there. So unless I don't tell him, he'll not do it. Please go on. Yet for some reason, if he acts independently and gives the order to capture you, then I will do the following. I will be the first to step into the boat and present myself before the king. On seeing me, do you think that he will still remain sitting on the throne? I will delude him and take control of him. So, he has a plan B, right? So that is protection number two. Please continue. If the king evades this move of mine, then I have another alternative. I will tell the king, O king, listen, so you can know what is true and what is false. Call all your religious heads and judges to come to the court. Collect all of your elephants, horses, animals and birds, etc. Whatever you have, bring them to your place. Then order all of, all of your Kazi priests to read from your scriptures and inspire every listener to such a state of spiritual emotion that they begin to cry. So now you're saying that he'll prove to the king and his courtiers that I am the Lord. So that is protection number three. Once he sees that, then the king obviously will not do anything to Shiva's Pandit. Anyway, let's go on. If they fail to do so, then I will reveal my true identity to the king. Then I will say, O king, on the instructions of these same Kazi priests, whose spiritual powers we have already witnessed, you want to forbid the congregational chanting of the holy name of God? Now you shall see my power to the full satisfaction of your eyes. I will capture a mad elephant and bring him here, along with other elephants, horses, deer and other animals, and make them all cry in ecstasy and chant Krishna's name. So you can see, even though he's, he's in full-blown Lord's, that magnanimous form and mood, he is still saying that 
he is not using his surashan chakra or something because that incarnation is all about giving mercy right she so saying i will make them cry in ecstasy and make them chant krishna's name please continue bro. i will make the king and all his men cry and chant krishna's name i know that you don't believe that it is possible but i will show you right now and you can see for yourself yeah so this is a very crucial line and then what happened after that please read on the lord saw a small girl before him her name was narayani and she was the young daughter of shrivas pandit's brother her glories are discussed by the vaishnava still today as Naya- narayani the recipient of lord chaitanya's remnants lord gaurachandra the supreme lord and super soul within everyone's heart ordered the little girl narayani chant krishna's name and cry in ecstasy the four year old girl became agitated with ecstatic spiritual emotions she lost her external sense and cried out o oh krishna she began to weep losing all perception of the external world tears streamed down her body and and fell to the ground such that the whole place was filled with narayani's tears smiling lord vishwambhara asked shrivas are your fears pacified now shrivas the great orator who is well versed in the scriptural conclusions threw up both his, both of his hands and said my lord when you exhibit your terrible form as the all devouring time and annihilate this entire material creation i have no fear by the strength of your holy name so now that you are here in my house what fear do i have thank you bro so this is how the story winds up you connect back the dots to say he proves to him that i am here so this is where he was there right what will happen will he take away everything and he says don't worry i am here and i'll take care of in all forms and fashions so let's just go on and this the smiling thakur shows his akashvani and then we had the kirtan so i think this is the verse that now he says and he says i'm not scared anymore we don't have time to go through the verses and he karmi tells premi now i am fearless and he accept offers his humble obeisances at that point of time and now is back into the fold of trying to follow krishna consciousness so we end there by premi telling karmi come join the party and let's have some kirtan so that's where we end sorry we are a little over the time but what can we do lord chaitanya's stories are so sweet we can go on and on and on it's like gulab jamun put into chasni put into jaggery and coated with sugar around sugar cane and then all of that can cure our jaundice of material attachment so that we can end now um would anyone have any points to make or something and i don't think there are many questions about because we talked about leela there is not much philosophy here the reflection of the way that we already let so we can end because um, guru puja is about to happen now so all then thank you now we can say vancha kalpa vancha kalpa tarubas cha kripa siddhu bhye vancha parajam parte vyo vesu namo namo इस ग्रेस विजय दामोदर प्रभु की जय प्रपात की जय जय समस्त देव भक्तगणों की जय हरे कृष्ण
नाम श्रेष्ठ मनुमी शचीपुत्र अस्वीप तस्ग्रज उपुरी माथुरी गोष्ठवाटी राधाकुंड गिरीवर अहोराधि माधवाशा प्राप्त यृपया श्रीगुर तम नोस्मी हे गुरो ज्ञानद दीनबंधो स्वानंददात करुणक सिंधो वृंदवनासीन हितावतार प्रसीद राधा प्रणय प्रचार I bow down to the beautiful lotus feet of my spiritual master by whose causeless mercy I have obtained the supreme holy name 